in this next section, I want to show you a little bit about the DDRs, which as we recall are the bins on the interface screen that let you load up video clips. We'll also look a little bit at the, at the related uh, graphics uh, bins as well. So at the bottom of the interface screen over on the, our left hand side over here, we have these two big boxes at the bottom of the screen. Remember that at the top of those boxes, there are tabs that are, that are labeled DDR1, Graphics1, and then there's also one that says Sound and PTZ. DDR1, as I've mentioned, is where you store video clips that you want to be able to play back during your program. Um, those can be a few seconds long, a few minutes long, a few hours long, it doesn't really matter. You can load as many of them as you need into your graphics bin. Um, or into your DDR bin. We also have DDR2 on the right hand side. It's basically just a mirror image of DDR1 and the idea is that you there may be some occasions where you actually want to have two video clips playing simultaneously so you can play one from each of the two bins there. Over on the DDR2 side we also have the tabs at the top. One that says graphics 2. Again it's just a mirror, imi imi mirror image of our graphics bin where we can store uh, photos or graphic elements like logos. Uh, and then we also have a special tab here called buffers where you can store animated uh, uh, graphic uh, elements. Um, so kind of halfway between a DDR video clip and the still images. Uh, buffers can be a place for holding still images or animated still images. Okay, so I'm going to show you the DDR2 here. Uh, DDR1 and DDR2 are exactly the same, so I'll just show you DDR2 since it's a little easier to see for me. I'm going to click on the DDR2 tab at the top. Right now we have four clips in the DDR bin here. We can actually move these around just by grabbing them and dragging them so I can take that one clip and move it over and change the order of the clips. There may be occasions where we actually want to play clip one, then clue clip two, then clip three, then clip four in order. So you can position them in the order that you want by just dragging them around. If you ever want to get rid of a clip, you can just click on the clip. And if you click on the right mouse button on the, on the mouse that you have here, it'll pop up a list of different functions. At the top of that list, you have things like cut, copy, paste, and remove so that you can actually get rid of that clip from the bin or you can copy it and then paste it into the other graphics bin if you want to change the order of the clips in some way. So if I say remove, for example, we'll just make that clip go away. Okay, uh, now um, there are other functions in here as well. You can do things like choose the speed at which the clip is going to play back from this menu. If the audio level is a little high or a little bit low, you can uh, change that value so that it'll be more consistent with the other clips that play before it and play after it. Uh, you can even change things like uh, the picture that shows up on the clip there. Uh, and let me come back to that in a minute. Uh, you can also see that each clip has the name of the clip. That's also possible to change. You can go in and rename a clip um, so that it is more representative of what's in it. A nice feature of this also is that uh, using the controls down at the bottom down here, you can actually trim a clip, meaning that you can only play a portion of it instead of playing the entire clip. So if you've got a clip that's five minutes long, but you only want to play a, mid a minute out of the middle of that, uh, if we look down at the bottom of the screen here, you've got this long bar and it has this darker blue uh, rectangle on the left hand side. I can drag that left hand, that rectangle by um, just grabbing it and holding down the left mouse button and then I can pull it right or pull it left on the timeline. So I'm going to select this clip and then if I scroll forward from there I can find the particular place in the clip that I actually want to refer to. So say that I wanted to start on this place where I'm showing a close-up of this tripod, I can move the little, uh, the little skimmer control to that position and then there's a button right down at the bottom here that says set in and that would actually allow me to tell that to tell the TriCaster that I want to start playing the clip from that position. So it'll just not show any of that first minute of the clip that I've trimmed off. I can do the same thing at the end here. I can scroll forward to find the, the end of the bit that I want to show. So say that I want it to end right at that place. I can then click set out and it'll isolate it to only show that little bit of the clip instead of the entire clip when I'm ready to show it that way. Okay, so the other controls that you have down at the bottom of the screen here the big plus button is designed to allow you to add additional clips to the, to the uh, DDR window here. When I click on that button, 
I can either select a clip that's already been uploaded to either your session or someone else's sessions. So you can see at the top of this list it says clips and I have a bunch of different sessions listed here. Um, so I could click on one of those and then find a session that's in that list that I want to add to my bin here. Uh, so for example if I uh, come down here um, to this one called Holiday Showcase, I can then select one of the clips there and bring it into, uh, into my collection of clips. Okay, so I'll choose this one called Community Hotline. Then I can just select the clip that I want, click OK, and it'll appear in the window. Incidentally, you can also import a clip from something like your thumb drive if you want to do that, although there's a slightly different process for doing that. Okay, so now we have four clips in our browser, and again, I can move these around if I want to change the order of them in some fashion, uh, and I can trim them, we've already established. Then also down at the bottom down here, I have player controls. These are like the buttons that you have on a DVD player or a VCR that allow me to, to uh, push play to start it manually or to stop it. The, the arrows that have a line on the left or a line on the right allow me to jump all the way to the beginning of a clip or to jump all the way to the end of a clip. The curved round arrow button here is, is actually a loop button and will allow me to tell the computer that I want to loop this, this clip and have it play over and over and over. And then finally next to that there's a speed control. So I can change that number to play it back at 100% speed, which would be the speed at which it was recorded, where I can slow it down or even run it faster than normal speed. Okay, so those are the ways that you can manually control the playback. There are also a couple of ways that you can make it, uh, make the TriCaster automatically start and stop the video as you go to play it. Uh, and you can tell it to just play a single clip or to play each clip one after the other. So you can tell it to play clip number one, then advance and play clip number two, then clip number three, and so on. So uh, the, the, the way to tell it to choose how many clips you want to play is this little button that says playlist. When that's activated, but when I click on it so it's blue like that, now if I select the first clip in the bin and then start it playing, it'll play that clip until it reaches the end, and then play the next clip in the line, and then play the next clip in the line, and it would do that until it runs out of clips, or until you turn this off manually while it's playing. So that's the playlist control. If I turn that off, then it'll only play the clip that I have selected uh, when we go to watch this back, and it won't play the next clips until you advance to those and start them manually. Um, I also have a little button over here that says autoplay. The check mark that you see there means autoplay is turned on, and autoplay is actually one of the nicest features of the TriCaster here. It lets the TriCaster automatically start the video playing for you when you switch to it. So if you have it on preview and you do a take or a fade to it, it'll uh, leave the clip paused until it appears on program and then it'll start to play. Let me give you an example of what that looks like here. So if I want to play the first clip in my browser window, I'll just click on it and then I'll make sure that autoplay is turned on. I've got it set to 100% speed. I've got the loop function turned off so it's not blue here and now I'm ready to play it. So if you come back to looking at the control room here and looking at the actual switcher panel, uh, I've got camera 3 on program currently, but say that I want to play that clip that's in the DDR2 bin, I can just select that on the preview row of my browser. So see I choose DDR2 here. You'll notice that the clip is just ni nicely paused on, on preview, but now when I actually push the button to start it playing, if I push either take or the auto button, it's going to transition to that and it'll automatically start the clip playing for me. As it's playing, you can, you can also see that it's counting down the time remaining on the clip in my little window here, and that would include even if I've trimmed it, and over on the, uh, uh, on, the, on, the D, on the DDR window, I can see the little progress bar moving across the screen here as it shows me that it's moving through the clip. It's also giving me a countdown here, and it'll change to yellow at 10 seconds from the end to red at the five seconds from the end, and then it reaches the end of the clip, it'll automatically transition back to whatever you have on uh, preview. Uh, it also, you'll notice, advances to the next clip in the, in the bin, so if you just want to go right to the next clip, you can now just uh, uh, dissolve to it again. So I'm going to go back and play that clip one more time so you can see it. I'll select the clip that I want to play uh, in the DDR bin. On the preview row of my switcher, I'm going to push the DDR2 button here. 
So I have it paused up there. I've already checked to make sure it's going to play back at normal speed at 100%. I've got the playlist turned off because I only wanted to play this clip and not the next one after it. And then I'm going to check autoplay to start it here. Now as soon as I trigger my transition, it'll start the video playing and you'll notice the little progress bar moving across here. It's counting the, down the video for me here. It's showing me that I'm about a, a third of the way through the clip here. And when it gets about 10 seconds from the end of the clip, this bar will change to yellow to visually notify me that we're coming up on the end of the clip. When I get five seconds from the end of the clip, it'll change to red. And then when it reaches that, it's actually, when it reaches the end of the clip here, the autoplay will actually trigger to transition automatically back to whatever is on preview for me. So whatever transition I have selected at whatever rate I have selected, the, the switcher will just do the work for me there. It really makes the timing of those DDR roll-ins much easier. So those are most of the functions that are important to know about in the DDR bin. Next we'll take a look at how to, how to add graphics to your graphics bins and how to add elements to the buffers.